like it's so nice. Like, I have had sex in, like, much worse locations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, like, I already feel like I've been romanced. <laughs> $150? No. <laughs> 10 minutes? <laughs> Not on this show's budget. In an example of gaslighting at its finest, the human race has kept the sex industry thriving for centuries, while for the most part denying its existence. That was until 2003, when New Zealand got hungry for another world first and decriminalised sex work destroying the very fabric of our society. Unfortunately, we were so busy giving ourselves a huge pat on the back that we forgot to extend those fundamental human rights to migrants, making sex work still a dangerous activity for some. So what gives? Why the caveat? And can't we all just have sex in peace and for money if we want? Do you want to experience something that a client might experience without having to take your clothes off? I think so, I don't know. <laughs> You're not gonna electrocute me, are you? Nope. Oh no, is this gonna fucking hurt? Cause I actually, I, I'm a little, little, little... Pussy? Yeah, I'm a little pussy. <laughs> the good thing is that if it hurts you, it'll hurt me. Okay. Oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that, I just wanna come when I have sex. <laughs> How did you first get into sex work? Um, I started working because I basically needed money to come to New Zealand. And then you came to New Zealand mm -hmm. to study, yep. is that right? And when you're in New Zealand, can you do sex work here? No, unfortunately. I, I did have a work permit, mm -hmm. but people still can't work in the sex industry if they are not citizen of New Zealand. And in your opinion, is that kind of like a fair restriction on this? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> you can't come to New Zealand with the intention of being a sex worker. But also, once you're here, you can't then become a sex worker, can you? You have to be a permanent resident. Got it. I think it's unfair based on, like, probably two main points. If someone have a work permit to work in any other industry, but not in a sex industry, mm. I think that is, like, discriminatory toward the industry itself. Yeah. And also, if you say, on sex work is decriminalised here, but just not for migrants. That is discriminatory to migrants. Yeah. Why then do you think we still have this kind of caveat in the law? The history of that, uh, we were really upset at the time when that was introduced in the 11th hour in 2003. You know, there was a perception that people would be trafficked from Southeast Asian countries in particular. Yeah. And somebody in their wisdom thought it would be sensible to say, well, no, person can come to this country with the intention of being a sex worker and nobody can operate a brothel. At the time when the legislation was passed, which was a long time before I became an MP... All right, uh, don't the, shift the blame the so view early. Was, no, the view was, and I think the view remains, that actually if you say that sex work is open to migrant workers, that actually creates an incentive to traffic people to New Zealand. So and, that... and, and, and I can say that from our point of view, it is working well to achieve the outcomes that were intended with that legislation. It is focused on harm reduction. We have next to no evidence of trafficking of people to New Zealand to work in the sex industry. We have women who squirt. Is squirting really a real thing? It is. I've heard it's basically just urine. Yeah, th there is a, you know, two schools of thought on it, but I have seen squirters and I have helped squirters clean up after a squirting booking and it's clear. It's a clear fluid. They do have okay. to hydrate if they're going to, if they're what I call a tsunami squirter, which is an, an enormous amount of liquid. But also a woman... <laughs> God, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm so <laughs> chill and not giggly about sex, but a tsunami <laughs> squirter... We're challenging you. <laughs> a tsunami squirter is not something I've ever heard. Oh, yeah, I mean, I kind of, I think I coined the phrase. <laughs> I call it a warm puddle squirter, which is women who just a little bit... And okay. then a tsunami. There's literally a tsunami. And I have like seen a... like a literal tsunami of, a, of someone sitting on someone having sex and then going, now you've done it, now you've done it, and pushing yourself up like this. And this flow of liquid went <sighs> up on this guy's face and he was not expecting it. <laughs> yeah, he got <laughs> in his mouth, in his eyes. Do we have an issue with people being trafficked in New Zealand then? Into sex work. We haven't All right. got an issue there. And other, you know, sex worker organisations around the world say that the biggest issue is the misperception around trafficking. You know, people say, oh my gosh, if you liberalise, if you decriminalise, you're going to facilitate conditions where people are more easily trafficked. It doesn't make any logical sense. And sex workers, particularly in countries like South Africa, you know, there were big stories about 
I think it was a Rugby World Cup and there were going to be thousands of sex workers who'd be trafficked to it mm. and they didn't find situations like that at all. And same if you talk to sex workers in Southeast Asian countries, they get really peeved with this whole trafficking discourse because they say it undermines their... Autonomy. Autonomy or... and, you know, they've been victims of raids. I guess people might say that the reason we don't have an issue, they could be like, well, because of that bloody good legislation we put in action. What would you say to that? I'd say, well, why is a sex worker in a motel travelling through this country who's put up with a robbery and, a, and an assault, afraid to come forward. So it is something you're saying, like it's genuinely affecting oh, yeah. people? Absolutely. Isn't you know, we've had women who have been assaulted, have been targeted because it's known that they're migrants and they know that they're unlikely to report. I was fortunate enough not need to work illegally in New Zealand but some people do, and it just put people in a bond of places if you need to work underground. Mm -hmm. If I'm getting in trouble with clients, brothel, I probably can't go to police, because yeah. if I need help, but then if I'm working illegally, I could get charged. So a lot of people tend to not to speak about what they go through if they need help. Yeah. If your clients know that you're working illegally, they'll try to take advantage of it. We're very big on trying to fight to make it legal for migrant sex workers to work in the sex industry yeah. in New Zealand. The reality is it's unfair, but also it gives people who are not as nice as myself the ability to be able to coerce them into doing things, like clients who might say, I know you're illegal, if you make me use a condom, I'm going to dob you into immigration. Or I'm going to pay you for half an hour and you're going to give me three hours. Oh, or God. an operator who is a little bit unscrupulous might say the same sort of thing. Like, I'm short-staffed and I don't care if your vagina's sore. You have to keep having sex for money because oh. you're illegal and what are you going to do about it? I will be frank. Migrant exploitation is a problem in New Zealand. Yes. And we do need to tackle it across the board. But there's lots of work out there for people that don't have to work in the sex industry. It strikes me perhaps as like a, a little patronising though to say to somebody who has a proclivity for this work, well, I'm sorry, it's just not available to you, not based on a wants or needs thing, but because we don't want you to do that. Well, everybody who comes here on a, on a temporary work visa is, is very tightly dictated to what kind of work they can do. What about if there became a booming market for sex work? <laughs> um, again, there is an approach taken through that legislation which is focused primarily on harm reduction. I mean, I, I hate to, but I also love to keep pushing you on this, when we see that the focus is harm reduction. Mm. The Prostitutes Collective would say, well, we're working with migrant sex workers who are facing problems because of this legislation. And, and I appreciate their point of view, but as I say... <laughs> But as I say, no, no, but as I say, if people are in New Zealand on a visa, then they've got lots of other options. I feel like it's ignoring the reality of people's lives and that that was like an argument that was used against the decriminalisation of sex work back in 2003 where we passed this law. So I guess when I hear that rationale, I go, didn't we deal with this 15 years ago? I don't see a problem that needs to be fixed at this stage. So you've been a very, very bad young woman, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> and it's nothing to laugh about. Oh, I can't take it! I actually can't take it! It's too much for me! I'm going to have a look and see what's no. in your desk. Crayons? No. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> what's that for? Stand up, bend over. Oh, my God! <laughs> Hands on the desk. Fucking hell, I can't... Bend over. Are you sorry for what you've done? No, yes! <laughs> did you use condoms or did you leave them in the desk? I left them when in you were the... having sex with that young man? I left them in the desk. So you had sex without a condom? Yes. Fine! Don't fucking hurt me! <laughs> oh, ow! No, that was actually fine. Oh, fuck me! <laughs> That's what you get for being a filthy, dirty <laughs> young woman who doesn't use condoms. What is it about sex work that we don't really still conceptualise of it as work? It's really interesting. I think it's that um, hang up on monogamy. Right. Isn't it? You know, cheating. <laughs> With the shift in law in 2003, sex workers recognised it's not morally endorsed. OK. What? Is that a legislative distinction? Absolutely. 
holy shit, I did not know that. It's funny, isn't it? And it, I guess it was a phrase that brokered some of the wavering politicians at the time. So while... It's in the legislation? That's fascinating. And why that is interesting, for example, work and income New Zealand can't advertise. Sex. And so there's, yeah, they can't advertise sex work. Because, because that of the would be morally, morally endorsing. endorsing. Are there any other professions that have these sorts of caveats, I guess? Not, not to my knowledge. Sex work stands alone. That to me is just... It's amazing, isn't it's it? It's astounding. Do you have a thought about the idea that the discussion around the morality of sex work may have impacted this law that we currently have in place? Morality and... finds its way into politics all the time. Are you at all concerned that... that maybe the stigma around sex work has perhaps blinded us to a better way of managing these situations? I think we can tackle some of the issues that we're seeing through other means that probably present less risk than changing the legislation might. Um, what is the, the risk? The risk is that we might open up trafficking and encourage trafficking of people uh, to work in the sex industry. Um, it's it's hard we, to point, it's hard to, point that, to the counter. Well, it's, we like, have very little evidence of trafficking of people to New Zealand for work in the sex industry. And less than before when the bill was put in place? Uh, I, I think no more or less than before. Right. You'd think that would be the biggest indicator, though, that if it had effect, that that would be one of I, the things I, that changed it. Well, like, if I was a lawyer, and I was once, but I don't want to get into it, <laughs> but if I was arguing this in court, right, you would have to prove causation. If you were, if you were arguing... Can you show me the causation? Can you show me the direct line from this to the result of no trafficking? Because if I were a person making decisions and here were people who worked directly with the industry telling me this isn't working, there was no necessary hard evidence that could point to a direct connection, a causative connection between the legislation and the result, I would go, well, fuck, you know better than I do. Uh, well, so you've got um, uh, one opinion from the Prostitutes Collective. You've got a different opinion from the immigration officers. And I think that... Th that overall the law is working well. What would you say to somebody who said, well, just get another job? Um, I don't know, like, that's probably not your business. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 